President al-Assad stresses that the countries conspiring against Syria have used all their tools except for an intervention which is impossible for them to reach. An official source in the Syrian Arab Republic points out that the collapse of Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt reveals the failure of so-called political Islam. Egypt's Supreme Court chief is sworn in as an interim president and calls for early elections. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. President Bashar al-Assad has affirmed that the experience of the Muslim Brotherhood in ruling Egypt had failed before it even started because such kind of rule runs counter to people's nature as it is wrong and what is wrong will inevitably fall. His Excellency pointed out that the Muslim Brotherhood project was hypocrite, aimed at creating sedition in the Arab world. They have been the first to raise the sectarian concept and the sedition project in Syria since the 70s, the President pointed out. In an interview with al Thawra Daily, President al-Assad said that what is happening in Egypt today is simply the fall of the so-called political Islam, for whoever uses religion in the interest of politics or in the interest of one faction to the inclusion of others will fall anywhere in the world. President al-Assad said the countries conspiring against Syria have used all their moral, material and psychological tools and have had nothing left to be used except direct intervention, and this is extremely far-fetched. President al-Assad stressed that the Syrian people have proved in actual reality and in the smallest details that they are a dynamic people in every sense of the word. He pointed out that tolerance is necessary in solving national crises, provided that this tolerance be by the people, not official. The president said, terrorism like cancer, if it is not uprooted, it would spread faster throughout the body. He added that a real revolution stems purely from the inside and has nothing to do with foreign sides. A Syrian official source has said Egypt witnessed yesterday a historical transformation that reflected the Egyptian people's deep awareness, adherence to their Arabism, rejection of foreign intervention in their national affairs, and opposition to any attempt to encroach on Egypt's sovereignty and rights. In a statement today, the official source stressed that the Egyptian people have renewed Egypt's national role and their ability to defend their interests, civilization, and history. The source added that the fall of Muslim Brotherhood has affirmed once again the inability of the political Islam forces to run the state, protect the cultural diversification and freedoms, and build a pattern expressive of the state's history. The source voiced the Syrian people's leaderships and armies' deep appreciation for the popular national movement in Egypt, which resulted in a big achievement, affirming that what had happened reflects a solid will to maintain democracy and diversification, the practice of political work and political pluralism, and the rejection of the Muslim Brotherhood as a project, entity, and establishment, not only in Egypt, but also at the Arab and world levels. The source extended the congratulations of the Syrian people, army, and leadership to the Egyptian people and leadership, calling on the Egyptian people to hold them to and defend this great victory, affirming Syria's stand on the side of the Arab brothers in Egypt with all its potentials. Chairman of Egypt's Supreme Constitutional Court, Adli Mansour, was sworn in as interim president of Egypt. Earlier, Mansour was sworn in as chairman of the Supreme Constitutional Court in front of the ten members of the General Assembly of the Court at Abdul Rahman Nasir Hall. Egyptian news website Al Yawm Al Sabah said that Mansour is committed to preserve the system of the Republic and respect the constitution and law. Egyptian Defense Minister ousted 
Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi amid Egyptians' joy and jubilations. The men demonstrators in Cairo suspended their sitting and opened the roads to cars, while a number of them organized clean-up campaigns. Head of the International Relations Committee at the Russian Duma Council, Alexei Pushkov, has said the events in Egypt have affirmed that the so-called Arab Spring did not result in democratic renovation, but in chaos in the region. He added in a statement that the Egyptian events indicated the absence of a rapid positive transition from a tyrannical regime to political democracy, and that such transition does not exist in Arab countries. This also shows that such process is very difficult, long and painful, and has its impact on the economic situation, Pushkov added. Everything that is happening in Syria is pre-planned by the USA and implemented by Arab and regional forces with one objective, Israel's interest, the destruction of the Syrian state and the dismantlement of the resistance axis. Under these titles, the International Labor Center in New York organized a symposium in cooperation with the Syrian American Forum in which it talked about the direct and indirect war led by the USA on Syria for years. The person in charge of the center, Sarah Flowenders, considered the war on Syria to have started years before the recent events through the ongoing sanctions, the secret and intelligence wars, and the formation of terrorist organizations which were provided with arms in order to get them involved in a war against the Syrian state. The participants also discussed the impact of the crisis, drawing comparisons between what the situation was before the sanctions and the economic siege and the present situation. They called for discarding violence and military intervention in Syria and starting dialogue among all the Syrians to safeguard Syria's safety and sovereignty as well as its distinguished social fabric. The U.S. government making dire threats on China and then Russia and how dare Ecuador, we can squeeze you, we can cut off your trade, threats on Cuba, don't you dare receive him, and so on and so forth. And it's important to recognize that the whole world is very much enjoying at this point thumbing their nose at an absolutely arrogant superpower. We think that the, the administration decision to, to arm the rubble is really short-sighted, but why? Uh, the first reason, and probably the most important reason, uh, the, the rebels on the ground are not the people that you can trust. The American government uh, speaks about some moderate and some extremists. On the ground, we don't see anybody except the extremists. Maybe those moderates are those people that sit in hotels in, in Turkey and somewhere else. Nevertheless, on the ground, we only see extremists that kill, and we only see the Islamists um, appearing in here and in there that think of Islam as a way of using a religion to, to get themselves into power. The, the U.S. Is, is financing this war to save the people of Syria, and the people of Syria are the first and, and most extreme casualties of it. And I, I think that your presentation really brought that home. This is not a civil war. It's certainly not a revolutionary struggle. It's a counter-revolution. Sectarian war across the region is what Washington wants. It is what Israel wants. It's what the Pentagon wants. They want not only the Syrian soldiers, and Syrian nationalists to die. They want the young people who were sucked into the so-called jihad to die. In the framework of targeting the national cadres, terrorists detonated an explosive device attached to the car of Assistant Minister of Labor, Rakan Ibrahim, in Zuqaq al-Jinn in Al-Baramke area in Damascus. A police command source in the province told Sana reporter that the terrorist act caused the injury of Ibrahim, who was admitted to the hospital and material damage in the car. The Syrian Arab army continued its task of clearing the homeland of terrorists, discovering new tunnels in Damascus suburb, connecting between Jobar, al qaboon and Zamelka, and used by terrorists to smuggle weapons and ammunition. The control on this area is extremely important, as it is located near Harasta and represents a deadly blow to terrorists.
Now to latest business and market news, but after a short break. Welcome back. The Minister of Agriculture asserted the importance of the scientific researchers in the agricultural sector to increase the production and look for alternative solutions that achieve high revenues and improve the using of water. During a workshop in the Ministry, the Minister pointed out to the importance of developing the agricultural work and enhancing the cooperation with the establishment of the scientific research, in addition to focus on putting the mechanism to integrate with other sectors. The general establishment for cereals processing and trade has delayed taking any decision about the quantities of the important wheat until completion of marketing the current season. The establishment also noted that the stored quantities are estimated at 3 million tons of wheat. On the other hand, the Director General has affirmed that the establishment's centers are receiving wheat for two months or more in order to present facilities to farmers. The Minister of Finance in Germany said that Turkey should not be joined to the European Union because it is not considered as a part of Europe, asserting Berlin's opposition of seeking Ankara to get the Union membership. On the other hand, Germany demanded to delay the talks which aim at discussing this issue as a response of the procedures taken by Turkey to suppress the protesters. The U.S. crude oil traded near the highest price in 14 months as U.S. stockpiles shrank the most this year and the ouster of Egypt's president fanned concern unrest will disrupt Middle East oil supply. Futures were little changed after advancing for a third day yesterday while U.S. crude inventories fell by 10.3 million barrels last week. European stocks advanced, halting a two-day decline as investors awaited interest rate decisions from the European Central Bank and the Bank of England, while Japanese shares fell amid low volume with the topics index retreating for the first time in six days. Jewelers' Assembly set the price of 21 karat gold at 7,800 Syrian pounds per gram, while the Rashadi golden coin was set at 56,800 Syrian pounds and the English coin was set at 63,400 Syrian pounds. fell for a second day against the yen amid bets that the European Central Bank will use its policy meeting today to reiterate its commitment to keeping monetary policy accommodative. A 17-nation currency approached its weakest level for more than a month against the US dollar. end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our site and use syriaonline.sy. Till next Saturday, all the best.